Good evening. I'm Mark Austin Thomas. Our subject tonight is the history of excuses, with an emphasis on the self-described guru of XQ, excuse man, Jordan Margolis. Some call him a prophet, and others are repulsed, and many just squint, scratch their heads, and simply say, what the f Regardless of where you stand on his philosophy, he is considered one of the most influential figures in America today. Just ask him. I didn't intend to become a pop culture icon. I would have been equally happy turning the classification of gall wasps into a super hot scientific study of human sexuality, but that bastard Alfred Kinsey beat me to it. I suppose there's still some creepy little insects that the Discovery Channel hasn't filmed ad nauseum, but even though insects have antenna, they're pretty clueless about excuses. I mean, they don't really care much about anything. They just crawl over each other without ever so much as an excuse me. So I had to develop the power of reverse apology on my own. But nobody's offered me any grant money to score chicks. The power of reverse apology has become a course prerequisite for philosophy majors at most universities. Excuse Man has transformed himself from a comic book superhero into the conscious of America, skewering celebrities, politicians, corporate miscreants, or just plain regular slubs who mess up and don't fess up. Every day I wake up and check the internet, looking for celebrities, getting arrested for DUIs, or stooping the nanny, or making incredibly stupid comments caught on tape. I feel lucky to be living in a time when YouTube is more believable than the Bible. It wasn't always this way. Indeed, in biblical times, excuses either went unnoticed or became the fabric of legend. Remember the burning bush? After holding his pish for miles, Moses has taken a leak behind the only bush in the desert, and all of a sudden, the bush yells out. Hey, Moses. Okay, so this is now, this is, now I'm doing a, um, I'm being God. So I have to change my voice. Hey, Moishi, it's God, you mumser. Put your schwantz away before I open up the earth and swallow you and your people up. I'm about to give you the Ten Commandments and you're pissing it all away. And that's when Moses gave the first excuse in history. He says, sorry, source of all wonder, who inexplicably masquerades as a talking, burning shrubbery. I was just trying to earn a Boy Scout merit badge by putting out a campfire. I suppose the fall of the Roman Empire gave me my original inspiration to devote my life to excuses. After a thousand years as the greatest civilization ever, some filthy, smelly, uncultured Huns kicked their asses so bad that Emperor Nero blamed his violin teacher for demanding too much practice. After that, the Italians didn't have another hit until the Sopranos. But then they had a lot of hits after the Sopranos. Quick-thinking Tony blamed his panic attacks on living in New Jersey. He was the first made excuster. Excuse scholars cite the competition between the European countries of England, France, and Spain for producing what is now known as the golden era of excuses. Who's my hero? I'll give you one clue. 1492. Well, that's actually four numbers, but it's the one date etched in every school kid's memory. Why? Because that's the date when Christopher Columbus didn't discover America and became the most famous excuster of all time. Crisco was super slick to pull that off, man. I think he blamed a faulty GPS or something. And nobody even knew what the hell he was talking about. Genealogical records prove that Excuse Man descends from royalty, which might explain a somewhat haughty and erudite manner. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say my family's always been a royal pain in the ass. My great, great, not so great Aunt Antoinette was the queen of excuses. The peasants cried for bread and she zapped them with the reverse apology now famously repeated as, let them eat cake. However, what she really said was, les amis de Napoleon, which was a pretty dirty double entendre at the time, but the censors cut that out faster than a guillotine. Same thing happened with my great great uncle George. Oh, uh, are we on? Uh, hi ho, Kermit the Frog here, and I'm speaking to you from George Washington's father's cherry orchard. And I'm here to check out a story that's going around. It seems that, uh, Young George Washington cut down his father's favorite cherry tree. Georgie boy was a trip, man. I cannot tell a lie. The Halliburton tree trimmers did it and left the bill for two billion dollars. Stop it, stop it. Heck, you, I can't take it anymore. That's preposterous. I know, Jordo. Oh, Halliburton always gouges on government contracts. But Dick Cheney's grandfather ran the company back then. In the history books, pinned the rap on George, which worked out well enough for him and for America. Some men are thrust into epic situations by happenstance, and others, well, they seem to be born to lead. There never appeared to be much doubt about excuse me. 
I object to that ambulance chasing video and I intend to file a restraining order against PBS and sue you XQ for defamation of character truth is a defense you shyster didn't you learn that at Northwestern Law School or were you too busy writing poem spiels and nature poems some gratitude I created you and now you've become a Frankenstein media monster. Oh, poor baby. Just because everybody wants my autograph on the new book instead of yours. Wah, wah, wah. As we have seen, the evolution of excuses is certainly evergreen. From ancient times to the present, so long as our human condition produces screw-ups, Excuse Man and his ex posse will be there to expose hypocrisy. And that's the way it is. And if it wasn't, I've got an excuse application for that. Excuse What? It's amazing. I knew this word. It's amazing that I actually. It's, oh, it's schlubs? But there's an S sound. It's just schlub. I can't say that. No, I was asking for the correct pronunciation. Oh, it should be. So, will people not know what I'm talking about? Well, they go to their dictionary.com and go, wait a minute, I thought it was look. <laughs> well, he's a black guy, what do you expect? Close enough, close enough.